I love them. Do you? But you know what I don't love? What don't you love? People who go to theme parks and don't go on roller coasters. No one needs someone oh. stood there, taking up all the parking, getting in the way of the queue, holding jackets and bags. Yeah, but what would you do with your jackets if people liked, say, me? I just don't take a jacket. Don't take your excess stuff. <laughs> right, you're quite passionate about that. I am that. passionate about it. Get on the coaster. Why not? They're brilliant. <laughs> OK, maybe one day. Well, one man who has a passion for riding roller coasters is David Ellis. David, welcome to the show. Oh, now, thanks so much. You, you just haven't been on one roller coaster. No, I think at the moment I'm up to 1,017 different roller coasters. Whoa. Are you like me? When people come along and don't go on coasters, they're missing out and they should be getting on. Uh, well, if they're there, hold my bags. I don't mind too much. They, but, oh, you <laughs> see? Fine. Everyone awesome. needs a bag holder. They do. Yeah. But, David, where did this whole obsession, I guess, with coasters come from for you? It started for me when I rode my first roller coaster. Uh, I was 10 when I rode my first one at Great Yarmouth. Um, my family used to always go to Blackpool like the, on a holiday. At the Pleasure Beach? But I went to the Pleasure the Beach big wooden Yarmouth. One. The big wooden one, yeah. yeah. It's been there since 1932. How can that be standing? Um, oh, it's perfect. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's eight, 82 years old, I think, this, Is this it? year. Yeah, so it's, um, but it's, you know, stood the test of time. It's a fun ride. And I went on that, and I just got a, a taste for it. My dad took me on, and uh, once I'd done that one, I then sort of, I was basically let loose to ride roller coasters. So next time we went to Blackpool, I did the roller coaster there, which arguably are some of the more extreme ones in this country. And then I discovered that there was a roller coaster club. Okay. Um, and that they like met up at parks and you know lots of people that also like roller coasters you know you always think am I the only one that enjoys this sort of thing you know and and, uh, and then to, to realize there's actually a club where people can actually get together and, and meet friends and and travel the world and and I started doing parks in this country and got talked to people and they said oh well, we've done x number of coasters and I thought oh well, I have to sort of tie up how many coasters I've done and so I sort of started my own sort of account and stuck on my little spreadsheet well being an accountant that works perfectly absolutely <laughs> accountants and spreadsheets you know they never, like never fall apart are they yeah. really yeah, so, uh, now, so it all started from there so obviously you go on loads of roller coasters yeah. does it not get a bit like Oh, here's another roller coaster. Do you still get a thrill from doing it? I do. It's it's um you perhaps don't get that sort of nervous feeling like you do when you're a bit new to it. I think there's it's a shame almost that you you, you, you don't get quite the same buzz, but still some trying something new and indeed the people that create roller coasters are always trying to reinvent new ways of doing things because there's only so high and so fast the body can take so they're having to come up with lots of creative ways of doing things launched coasters and upside down coasters and inverted coasters and so so there's always new things to sort of our thrill you well yeah. talking about the body david there's a yeah. certain photo i want you to explain on the nemesis mm -hmm. so if you have a look at this oh yes that what's been going on <laughs> is that is that normal um not normal Normally, no, no. That was actually a Guinness World Record attempt. Um, it was one that we did in 2004 on Nevis's at Alton Towers. Um, and there's actually been three Guinness World Records uh, set on naked ride, riding So that's the coasters. most naked people on a ride? On a ride, Were yes. there people who weren't naked on it? Going. Uh, no, <laughs> like, no. They're, they're taking up valuable space, surely. <laughs> the, this, the valuable naked space. <laughs> well, you do need someone to hold your clothes in that oh, stuff. Yeah. What were you going to say? Then? <laughs> oh. but, but yeah, I mean, the, um, that was after the park had closed. Um, however, while we were standing there, the last members of the public were actually leaving on the monorail, and of course they were coming across. We were standing <laughs> there, and you could have seen, you know, if you if you could have seen their faces, it was just I've still got that, those faces in my memory. It was I just, like they've still got so, you in their memory as well. I'm pretty David. sure so. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was a Guinness World Record. Legs um, dangling about everywhere. And, uh, yeah, legs. And since since then, we actually broke that record in in, in South End, so in East Anglian uh, Park at Adventure Island. What, the End. naked? Um, yeah, Probably and 102 crazy. people took part in that event, and that's the current world record. Do you come up with your own ideas for this, or was this something that was already organised and pitched to the many, club? Or? Many, of, many of the parks have, have come up with. The original record was set by Thorpe Park. They were celebrating, I think, 25 years. It current of the, their existence. It coincided with 50 years of Guinness World Records. So they thought it would be a good idea to do that. So I took part in that one. But, of course, within the same chain... Alton Towers, not to be outdone by their southern counterparts, decided, yeah, we could beat that. We've got a, a roller coaster that have got four more seats on than that one has. Ah, so oh, so that, was where the, that was where the Nemesis one came in, you see, and Nemesis did it. Um, and so that record stood for six years before Adventure Island decided they were going to um, break the world record. But they did that as a charity fundraiser, and we raised £30,000 for the breast cancer award in the local hospital there. That's amazing. Oh, that's cool. just for, so, you know, it's breaking a record, but it's actually about raising money for charity. Yeah. Which is good fun. Talk about big numbers and things. Explain your T-shirt to us. 
Yeah. Okay, the teacher is is me on a uh, what was called an alpine coaster in Austria. Um, I wrote this a few years ago now, but it became a viral hit on on YouTube on on the internet uh, a few years back. And uh, so far, it's had 9.2 million views, what? including 3 million in its first week. Um, so it, it was it was like sort of you know the the biggest viewed clip in the world that that particular week. It was just like notorious. That, yeah. So when that's happening on your on your computer and you're seeing these numbers is totting up, what goes through your head? Well, actually, it was quite interesting because um, when people put comments on your videos on YouTube, you tend to get like an email that says somebody has commented on the video or somebody has subscribed to you or whatever. And, I, and, and at one point, I was getting something like five or six hundred emails coming in. Um, people are commenting, people are commenting, people are commenting. And, and, you know, I tried to sort of um, reply to as many as I could. <laughs> so, yeah, it, kept me, it kept me pretty busy, I'll tell you. But it was, yeah, it, it just came out of nowhere, to be honest. You know, the video had been around for a while, but I think we're in one of Let's these... Let's get it viral again. One, yeah, one, again. Of, one of these um, video sharing sites, I think, had made a reference to it, and it just went bang, and it just worldwide, it just was like a, a, a sensation and, and took me completely off guard. It was really one, surprising. one of the things that does worry me a mm. little bit, apart from just the feeling sick... Um, is what if you get stuck? What if it stops and you get stuck upside down? Has that ever happened? Stopping upside down is actually quite rare because normally gravity. But it stops does out. happen. <laughs> occasionally, oh, no. occasionally, what I do stop on the way round. Um, ironically, as if it comes to enthusiasts, that's like the holy grail. Um, you want that to happen? <laughs> yeah. No this, is, this is this is rather yeah. crazy. Members of the public is probably their worst nightmare. For us, it's a real tick in a box, you know. Sometimes you're stuck upside down. down. Yeah, to us, you just be stuck on a ride. Particularly if you have to like get out and walk down the lift hill, for example. Those sort of things you just can't normally oh, do. Oh, you'll be so, uh, top table so, at the uh, so, 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 yeah, to dinner. It, actually, if you you know if you get something like that happen, even even if we ride lots of rides, it's still very rare for that to happen. But when it does happen, if it happens when you're on it, you know, it's it's actually quite special for us. Oh, I know. It's, it's quite well, I know you've been all over the world. Have you got a favourite roller coaster? Um, difficult to pick one ride, I think. I've, I've got a, a, a selection of rides that I think, you know, I do, you know, I do really like. There's a wooden one in, in America and a park called Holiday World in, in a town, uh, funnily enough, called uh, Santa Claus, a little town called Santa Claus ah. in Indiana. They've got a wooden coaster there called The Voyage, and it would be rated like the, the top one. Well, it all started, of course, from the uh, wooden one in Great Yarmouth. Mm -hmm. so. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah so much it's been great chatting to you. Thank Cheers. you. Well, yeah. sadly, that's all we've got time for today.